Hariyom everyone, we are Kavi and Shavit. Um, thank you Gitaka for inviting us and allowing us to share our thoughts on Odyssey and our journey in Odyssey for this project. Um, to answer your very first question, how did we, uh, how were we introduced to Odyssey? So yeah, I mean Odyssey was something new to all of us at that point. I think the first time we had seen Odyssey, of course, goes way back to uh, Swan Lake, uh, Lalita Lavanga in the uh, Swayamvara scene and then uh, again in Chankra, uh, in the uh, King Janaka's court, Chankra Varnam Pallavi was uh, done there. I never thought that we would be actually dancing Odyssey just a couple of years after that uh, and when we were asked to uh, join the classes, um, all dance students were asked to mm -hmm. yeah. join classes and um, in, the, in the beginning um, we were told that it was uh, yoga classes. So okay, I thought fine, join yoga classes. Um, but then later it became Odyssey and this new dance form we are learning and um, I mean I couldn't get past yoga itself. I was struggling I was struggling with the shoulder stand. I still struggle with the shoulder stand. And then you are asked to learn this new art form at the age of 15, you know, uh, where I've actually just started Bhardhanatyam four years before, as compared to my peers who are a lot more uh, longer in Bhardhanatyam. Um, and I was finding it quite difficult, you know, and uh, in fact, um, so much so, Gitaka uh, spoke to my parents and said that, um, you know, for the uh, Odyssey Odyssey sure. show, okay. that I was not ready uh, to take part and maybe I would have to, you know, maybe take part in the, next, in the future. And uh, my parents asked me, do you want to still take part in, uh, do you still want to go for classes? And uh, I was disappointed, but I said, no, I, I will carry on. I will still go for classes. And uh, Gitaka, uh, of course, saw me at the back of the class. She said, uh, no, you come to the front of the class. Okay, you've got two boys at the side of you, Devaraja and Devakumar. They will make sure that you learn the dance. Okay, and, and so happened that um, by some chance, somebody dropped, dropped out, out make, or they couldn't make the... Make the uh, Ragishri style and um, Gitaka put me in and said Charlotte you're going to learn this and these two boys are going to make sure that you learn it and by, by hook or by crook I learned it and uh, it was Somji's grace and of course through your teaching that I was able to perform uh, on stage and when you look back at the recordings now you can't believe that I was actually on stage and, and um, dancing with my peers and it was, it was fun. It was, it, was, uh, it was a nice experience that we got. So when we were dancing Odyssey, what, what did you learn or what did, what, what did Odyssey do for you? How did it have an effect on you? For me, I think when you speak of Odissi and Gitaka's teaching, the one thing that comes to mind is how when she came and, sh and uh, we were preparing for shows, right? She will always make sure that, um, she, that she used to say it like this, she said, you're not prima donnas, don't just appear and expect to be on stage. So being an artist, being a performer, it's, it's, um, you, it's a whole round, it's a very, how do you say it? It's like a very all-rounded um, sort of preparation. So you prepare months before the show, yeah. and then um, you need to make sure you know how to put your makeup on. You need to know how to drape the sari. You need to know how to do your hair, put all all the accessories. And um, so, yeah, at 14 years old, we were given this huge responsibility, and saying that you know, if you want to dance, you have to do it all. You don't you don't just dance. You know, you have to do. All of it. You need to know your music. Yeah. You need to know your stage cues. You need to know your lighting. So for me, that was one thing I think um, I learned during her time, especially when she was 
um, teaching us, you know, during those years. And with that, we used to travel quite a bit. So it was not just your uniforms. And then later, she used to put us in charge of different uh, categories. So we used to take care of um, everyone else's costumes, yes. to make sure it's all packed after the show, every piece of jewelry is intact, you know, those Ziploc bags, yeah. put everything in. And you know, we used to travel, we traveled to quite a few countries like that, you know, packing stuff and putting it away. So that, that, that was probably one of the things I, yeah. I remember. And, and did it, um, going forward, did it uh, have an effect on your, on your personal life as well in terms of your uh, studies, in terms of your work? Did it, did it uh, affect you? I would like to think that it did. I would like to think that, you know, now if I were to do something, I would do it properly. I would do a thorough job. I mean, I would really like to think that I am that today because she did teach us that. I mean, we were at such an impressionable age. We were, what, 14? Yeah. And um, we were really taught how important it is to be disciplined, to, to be on time. Remember, we used to have those uh, pre-production prayers, right? And before that, we'll never be ready for it. But during um, that period, she would make sure all of us are ready by 6.30, the show is at 8, yes. by 6.30 we are all oh. done, everything, head yes. to toe. No one is still adding on a little bit of lipstick or blusher. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. 6.30 we are all ready. So I'm not, still not very punctual, but I mean those are the things that we were taught back then. Yes. So, yeah. And in fact, um, the lessons that we have learned uh, from those days, we have actually I've actually incorporated into my my life um, as a professional um, because Gitaka uh, empowered us. She gave us that leeway to actually um, try and explore the art, explore the dance. Although we were we were kids, you know, but at the same time, she'd say maybe do it another way or try it another way, you know, and, and actually you uh, bring that into your um, professional life, you know, you, and she, she actually saw the good in all of us, yeah. there was you know, who the positives in all of us, yeah. like, I mean, in our group, I, I was clearly the, the most, um, uh, what do you call it, um, are probably the dancer with the least amount of ability but at the same time she saw positives in me and that has actually helped me in my uh, task as an administrator to see the positives in people to actually when you're working in a team as a team you look to for you to go forward for your organization to go forward you need to see the best in everyone and you get their collective effort and you will see that actually there is a positive output from you know their, that, that positive energy so I think um, in that way um, ODC has been. actually helped yeah. you know in, in uh, our daily lives mm -hmm. and I don't know for you um, whether uh, these are some things that we would actually want to pass on these values would we like to pass on this to the next generation you know you were, you were saying about um, what, what was it you were saying again about how um, dance teaches you certain things right yes. uh, my colleagues will say until today whenever I'm teaching something or I'm trying to explain something I would always say it's never um, right or wrong it's never black or white I think music and dance really teaches us that because you can have the guideline, you have like a template of how the dance should be, but each person that dances it or sings a particular composition will have their own interpretation. And you can never sometimes say which is nicer or, or better than yeah. the others. Like, so same thing at work sometimes. You know, when I'm asked, is it A or B or should it be this or that? I find it very difficult to answer because it, not, it doesn't have to be this or that. Sometimes yeah. it can be... Uh, both are correct. Uh, in different times, both will be accepted. So as long as you achieve the final goal, I think it doesn't matter how you go about it. Everybody will have their own way of doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I think when you do a bit of a dance and music, it tends to have that in your life. You see a lot of the in-between, you see a lot of the grey, you see yes. a lot of the uh, 
uh, you know, it's not so rigid, it's not so square, everything doesn't have to fit into uh, preformed uh, mm. boxes. But, but yeah. what would we like to pass on to the next generation from, from, a, oh, okay. from, from an art point of view, from an Odyssey point of view, from, yeah, in general? For me, definitely I would tell people, I mean fellow parents or young parents, um, I think children should learn dance or music. Um, simply because there are many, many, many benefits and some of these benefits you wouldn't even realize until uh, many, many years later. And uh, I, I have some parents who tell me that, for example, their child doesn't have um, the ear for music or doesn't have the feet to dance. And all I want to say is that it doesn't matter because uh, not all of us are going to become professional dancers, although we aspire to be, but the fact that we have learned it uh, makes um, such a big difference. Um, do you remember when we were watching like theatres and stuff? Yeah. Uh, because of our background Knowledge. in dance and music, yeah. you will always appreciate those um, little things that happen. So if you're watching a production, you will um, you will notice the cues, you will notice the, the fancy, I mean the lighting. Even even from the box office, from the box, the ticket, uh, the ticket collector, you would notice everything about, you know, the process. Yeah. And then going in, the, the ushering, looking for your, your seat, and then uh, stage left, stage right, you look at the booms, you look at the uh, effects, you look at, you know, how the you dancers go in, yeah, you come and go out. You all these yeah. small, um, subtle things that make a production what it is. And even music for that matter, if you've learned a little bit of music, you find that your ability to appreciate music is heightened. So um, if you've learned, if you've got even basic music knowledge, and there's a nice um, song play, yeah. you'll appreciate the way it's uh, being harmonized or the way it's being sung so well. Yes. Or, you know, you can appreciate it. And I think that ability to appreciate dance and music is, um, it's, it's difficult to put value to that. So for that reason, I would say that, you know, children should be allowed. We were so blessed that our parents allowed us that. Yeah. Although we couldn't, I mean, it stopped after we went off to, to study. but. I am so glad that we were given that chance in the first place to be able to do it while we did you know, enjoy it the way we did. Yeah, we did. So, Gitaka, thank you very much for allowing us to share our thoughts, um, to be part of this project. And of course, we can't forget what Uncle Cat has done for us as yeah. well. Um, he uh, has actually taught both of us in various uh, productions um, a lot of what he has actually taught us has actually helped us in our uh, current lives our current uh, Cat was like preparing us for stage right and yes how exactly he's those, um, voice projection yes. and how do you speak up for theater and yes. stuff but little did we know then that will actually be helping us now. prepare for, exactly. for life today or yeah. you know how we are yeah. As people yes. today, isn't it? So, so we thank you both uh, from the bottom of our heart, uh, Gitaka, Uncle Ket, for all that you have given us. And may uh, God always bless you. Um, thank you very much. Have you?